Hello everybody, it's almost Valentine's Day again and so I thought I'd just share something that might bless or encourage or benefit you guys. Um, I know that a lot of people have crushes and a lot of people are also single and thinking, oh, you know, I want to get into a relationship, I want to be with someone and etc. Now before you jump in or if you're already in a relationship and you're thinking of marriage, uh, these are some things that might help. Now in the description below, we have uh, or, or I linked to you um, a lecture we did in church a few a few years ago that might help so consider this a kind of like a part three all right so it's almost Valentine's Day and I always hear this uh, love is enough you know Valentine's Day is a day of love love is enough and you know what I love the little um, Tony Stark <laughs> meme or Tony Stark uh, expression when people say love is enough I always end up concerned and I kind of roll my eyes a little bit because that's usually something that most unmarried people say uh, but really is love enough or maybe a better question is to define love because we have to talk about that now uh, I, I saw this other meme and I loved it here it is uh, for Valentine's Day if you've got nothing in common go for it because then you'll have nothing to fight about <laughs> that's really a funny thing but uh, let's go straight into the meat. I want to talk about this. I want to talk about the four quadrants of attraction. Uh, these uh, these four go hand in hand. They're all, uh, I would say, equally important. All right. Uh, the first one would be your core values. And uh, when we talk about this, please, no, I'm not talking about um, sin or not sin. This is more practical wisdom, practical advice that might really help. Okay. So I'm not saying that uh, if you, you miss one of these things, you're sinning. I'm saying it might be something you should think about or re-examine or reconsider. Okay, so the first one would be core values, okay, or convictions. Now, what are, what are these? Uh, these are strongly held beliefs and these are some examples. I'm not saying that the person would have all of these, but uh, these are the prime examples. So, for example, uh, is the person Christian or not? Jesus or the world? And the values of scripture and the values of this world are are usually ext uh, extremely uh, opposite. Okay, so if you're a Christian, you're not supposed to be with a non-Christian, and that's just gonna be heartache for you. If you're a non-Christian trying to get with a Christian, you're just gonna be frustrated later on. Okay, now even for both both of them being Christians, there are certain beliefs that uh, are core values to some, like tithing or grace giving. For others, it's speaking in tongues versus not speaking in tongues things like that uh, how about health and exercise others value health so much we don't know why they do but some of them really do uh, they they exercise every day and they just cannot be with others who don't uh, veganism is another example of that when it comes to health uh, veganism uh, or how about if you're a democrat or republican some people don't care others are very passionate about this spanking children yes or no uh, when it comes to in-laws, uh, what about the budgets, what about the visits, things like that. Okay, so these four go hand in hand. So first one is core values. The next one is your holistic background. This is everything you bring to the table. Okay, when we say background, it's not just your past. It's your past and your present. It's your family members and your obligations. Uh, we're talking about your social circles and your obligations to your social circles as well. Your finances, your past traumas. Um, if you've got a health or genetic issue, uh, like all your your family members had cancer or all your family members have high cholesterol or you're extremely diabetic because everyone in your family was diabetic, things like that. You got to talk about those things. You got to know about those things because these might be deal breakers. All right. Holistic background. That's everything. Third, personality and quirks. I know this doesn't sound like much, but this is actually very, very important. Sense of humor, because laughter is so important in a relationship. Temper, not just temper, but temperament as well. Take that into account. What about your intro to extroversion scale? If one person is uh, an extreme introvert, the other is an extreme extrovert, they probably won't get along. You have to find a middle ground, somewhere in the middle where you can actually uh, interact in those areas. What about mannerisms? picking their nose in public, scratching scratching the the buttocks, right? Like you see some people, uh, they're walking around in public and then their hand just suddenly goes whoop, goes behind and uh, scratches the butt. Um, fashion, hygiene, uh, it, it could be as simple as, you know, cutting your nails, 
uh, to showering once a day, twice a day, or once a week, all right, or once a month. Okay, uh, how about discipline, self-control, impulse control? You'll find out about this, how the person spends, uh, you know, when you're doing groceries, and then they just pick whatever from the from the aisle, uh, you know, so there are uh, uh, what you call that impulse buyers, and there are what you call disciplined shoppers, all right? So personality and quirks has to do with their uh, the way they move, the way they walk, the way they talk, um, how they eat. Do they do this while they're eating? You know, like do they smack their lips? For some people, that is very annoying. For others, it's actually fun. Uh, for for a few people, when they eat, do they bring their knees out of the table? Do they put their foot uh, on the chair while they're having dinner? Uh, you know, little things like that. Uh, these are are uh, issues that might blow up in the future. And lastly, hobbies and interests. Now, for some of you guys, you might be thinking, really, is this so important? Absolutely. Hobbies are what you're doing now. Interests are what you might do later. Uh, it can go from movies, K-dramas, anime, uh, extreme sports, video games, gym and fitness, travel, all those things. Now, I want to talk about uh, this a little bit more. If you've got zero common hobbies and zero common interests, then you're in danger in a relationship. Because in the end, you know what's going to happen? Um, you're going to just use each other for sexual satisfaction or physical intimacy and after that the guy will want to be with a guy friends and the girl will be with a girlfriends and the only time you come together is when you need some physical satisfaction and that's not really going to be a relationship that's going to be more like friends with benefits in the end okay so you need to have something that you love you both love in common so for example for example if both of you are christians and you say love is enough guys let me tell you straight uh, let's go back here. Let me tell you straight. There's so many Christians out there who all love Jesus. So core values is not enough. Holistic backgrounds will come into play as well. Both can be Christians, but one person, um, uh, let's just pretend. Okay, let's go back here. All right, so let's just pretend. Uh, both are Christians. That's great. But one, one Christian has severe trauma, okay, while um, the other doesn't want to be with someone who want, who has that kind of trauma, doesn't know how to deal with it, doesn't know what it feels like, doesn't cannot relate, and doesn't have the interest to find out more about those kinds of traumas, then they shouldn't be together, all right? Then there might be a lack of sympathy slash empathy on one party, or there might be um, a lack of desire to grow and to change in the other party, you know? It's possible for, for people to just want to stay victims of their past traumas. So. You know, we're not shifting blame here. We're just saying what's practical or we're talking about what's practical. Okay? Uh, what if the personality and quirks, there's just too much to annoy you uh, or too much that the other person uh, is doing that you get annoyed by? Or, you know, so it, it's just uh, very, very important to consider these four quadrants. This uh, fourth is actually important as well. For example, um, Let's say both are Christians and I love, let's say I enjoy uh, free diving or apnea diving. That's different from scuba diving, okay? It's when you hold your breath. And it's very important to have a buddy. Now, my wife also enjoys it. So when I talk about the accountability system when you go under the water and you hold your breath, and I talk about, you know, a spiritual accountability with um, fellow Christians in the Lord uh, and you're accountable to one another, these hobbies and interests end up shaping or helping you make analogies and illustrations for your core values. If your spouse or partner cannot relate, then you will not feel like you're bonded to your spouse or your partner. So be very careful. If, if one of these are lacking, you might want to start re-examining or reconsidering what, uh, what it is that you found attractive with your partner. Because if you say, I'm attracted to my partner because he or she is pretty and that's about it, then in the end, you're going to be bored with one another, all right? Yes, there is love, but love, uh, love itself, there's so many people, so many Christians out there. If you say it's just love, there's so many other Christians there who you can love. So you have to figure out what is it that caused you to be attracted to the other person, all right? Now, all of these come into play, and I know it's almost Valentine's Day. This might be something that might cause a little 
you know, some people to start asking questions and all of that stuff. I don't mean to ruffle any feathers, but I hope this helps. So God bless you guys.